Lord, have your way with us right now. Let our fleshly beings sit down and let your Holy Spirit stand in our place. God, speak to us, speak through us. And because we are sinners in need of your saving grace, speak in spite of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, church, we pick up this week with part two of our Greater Expectations sermon series. God's plan for living your life. And I'm making bold claims that God has a plan for living your life. But I stop short in saying exactly what that plan is for each and every one of you. (laughs) But I truly believe God has a plan for your living. And so last week, as we entered and began this Greater Expectation series, I encouraged you to practice, practice a spiritual discipline. And that spiritual discipline was one of singing and said, sing wherever you are, sing wherever you go. And I even said, as you are waking up in the morning, brushing your teeth and having the toothbrush in your mouth, sing that song that God has placed on your heart. So I hope that you this week have practiced singing because what we learned last week is that Singing truly motivates us to get closer to Christ. We saw in the scripture from Luke, the angels coming over the shepherds in a song that they sang, uh, today do not be afraid, blessed is this day in the city of David, born to you a savior. And they sung this hymn with such veracity and with such passion that the shepherds at the end of it said, let us go together to see this thing what the angels have told us. They were motivated to get closer to Christ. Advent is the beginning of our Christian New Year. And next in a couple weeks, you'll be making New Year's resolutions. Some of those resolutions will be going to the gym. Some of those resolutions will be stopping some uh, bad habits. Some of those resolutions will be spending uh, more quality time. Some of those resolutions will be uh, things that are focused with your job or with your family. But encouraged you at the beginning of this Advent season, of this Advent New Year, that you make a resolution to get closer to Christ. And that resolution, that, that closeness is in part done by singing that song that God has placed in your heart. I would also say that, so I I said this and I want to continue today's uh, Greater Expectations series. Dallas Willard wrote a lot about spiritual disciplines and he wrote a a lot about prayer and and devotion and practicing gratitude. And he uh, gave this very keen insight on, on what it means to have a spiritual discipline. And so I said, singing is a spiritual discipline. And he says, a spiritual discipline is something you have the power to do today that will help you experience and do the things you yearn to do in the future. You know what? But how many of us can feel powerless today? How many of us can look around and all, uh, around us and often wonder, what can I do? Or say, there's just so much to do. There's obviously not enough me and so much more to do. And as a result, we can feel helpless and hopeless and even wonder, can we ever find our way to the future in which we yearn to live? Well, God's plan for practicing living, your living, your life says yes. You can begin practicing acts of God today because you have the power to do something today to experience those things you want to do in the future. And when we think about greater expectations for the future, it requires us to step outside of our comfort zone today. Greater expectations is about rebuking stagnation and dispelling the status quo. 
Greater expectations is about taking deep breaths and saying in the great words of those captains of the Starship Enterprise, I'm ready to boldly go where no person has gone before. Are my truckies out there? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> But unfortunately, this growth, these greater expectations doesn't always happen because we have convinced ourselves to play it safe. We've convinced ourselves with those two words that, uh, uh, those two words that are just always rolling off of our tongue, good enough. We have convinced ourselves to be good enough with the palatable images of the future. And we convinced ourselves these things because safety Certainty and even control are all within our comfort zone. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, this week's spiritual discipline leads us to greater, that it is leading us to greater expectations is the spiritual discipline of getting outside of your comfort zone. God bless you. So, so you know what a comfort zone is, right? Amen. It, it, it's, it's that place or that situation where you feel safe or at ease, where uh, you're, it's cozy, it's without stress. But also that comfort zone is that place where if you stay too long, it becomes a rut, causing you to miss out on valuable opportunities for growth. And there is truth to the philosophy that getting outside your comfort zone means having to take some risk, trying some new things, pushing your boundaries. This season of Advent, from a theological perspective, my sisters and brothers, is uh, all about movement outside the comfort zone, the ultimate movement of being outside the comfort zone. We call that the incarnation. God coming into this world, God pushing the boundary of relationship and reconciliation. By trying something new and being born not only into this world, but opening the path of being born into our lives. And so I won't say it's easy because we like our comfort zones. It's not always easy to get outside of our comfort zones. We like our comfort zone. We like to do things we're good at and we like people to acknowledge the fact that we're good at them. If you're like me, you often like being in the zone. You want to stay there and it's comfortable, it's easy. Those are places that, that feel good to us and who doesn't want to feel good? And sometimes we stay, unfortunately, in our comfort zones because they keep us protected. And then we, uh, they keep us from protect, protected from experiencing pain. They keep us protected from experiencing disappointment and sorrow that may come when we leave these zones of comfort. And truth be told, we don't want to experience the chill that comes from those emotions, but it's precisely in transversing these emotional highs and lows, I would suggest, that we get an opportunity to depend on the divine intervention and as a result, grow in our faith. We sometimes there are in our comfort zones and it becomes all about me, myself, and I. What have I done? Look what I can do. Look at my gifts. Look at my talents. Look at what I've been able to accomplish. And in that zone, we fail to depend on the one who gave us all those things. We fail to depend on the God, the divine God. We become independent. I am writing this sermon and it made me think about that story, Moses. Y'all know the story of Moses, right? Amen, shaking your heads. And, and Moses uh, was uh, at the burning bush and Mo Mo God said to Moses, Moses, I want you to go back into Egypt and I want you to say to Pharaoh four dramatic, simple words, let my people go. And Moses was saying, those might be four simple words in and of themselves, but when you put them together, when you team them up with someone who can't speak, when you team those four simple words with someone who is nervous, when you team those four simple words with someone who is in front of a king, a pharaoh, when you team those four simple words with, uh, with someone like me who is not powerful enough or not connected enough or strong enough, you know what, or, or strong strong enough to rock the boat, nor do I even want to rock the boat, those four simple words become more than simplicity, God. I'm weak. 
I can't do it. And if you're like Moses and often like we all are in some way, shape or form, when we're met with the opportunity of greater expectations, met with the opportunity to get out our comfort zone, we often sell ourselves short, don't we? We say, I'm not good enough or I can't do that. We say we don't have the time. We say there's so much more to do. There's something else uh, that's happening. And this is the essence of the scripture that Kathy read to us today. You can go back to it in your bulletin and look at it uh, and, and look at it. But, but I'll, I'll sum it up for you. It says not only is God through the prophet saying I'm with you. Not only is God saying through the prophet Isaiah you're being called to greater expectations to make life better, not only for you, but for so many others, but that God takes what is weak in us and uses that precisely to reconstruct us in his service. I'll say it again because you have to look at Isaiah chapter 42, they call it Deutero Isaiah, and in the fuller context, I only gave you a glimpse of verse 16, but in the entire uh, portion of it, what, is, uh, what the scripture writer is saying is that I'm blind and I'm weak, I, I'm, I'm all these things that I can't be used by God, and God is saying it's precisely because of those things that you can be used by God. That those that the things that we think are, are, are irrelevant, the things that we think aren't good enough, the, the insecurities that we have, the weaknesses, the frailties that we, that we think we have, the ways that we're saying, I'm just going to shy away from this because obviously God isn't choosing little old me. It's the same thing God says, no, it's because of those things that I'm choosing you. Life is tough. The stresses of life are real. We have more lows than we have highs. And so you're calling me now in the midst of my low, in the midst of my weaknesses to say, you want me to do more, God? You want me to step out on faith and do what, God? You want me to get outside my comfort zone, God? I think not. But truth be told, the magic, the hope, the newness of life, the new opportunities come when we realize this and decide to let God use our weaknesses for his greater plans. I mean, think about the weaknesses and the feelings of inadequacy and in the relationship between Mary and Joseph and how God used that to birth the son of God. Even in our own Methodist movement, John Wesley saw the weaknesses and the practices of a church and got out the comfort zone and started the Methodist movement with the simple idea that there is no holiness but social holiness. Students of a myriad, uh, from a myriad of cultures and backgrounds of the 1960s showed maturity beyond their age and outside their own zones of comfort as they marched for their lives in order to follow a conviction to make this land a more perfect union. Recently, women took risk, mortgaged their reputations and careers and said times up day after day in their uncertainties and many times feelings of inadequacy, struggling parents attempt to live by those faithful words day after day, hour after hour. I'm doing this because I love you. All because there have been decisions made to step outside of comfort zones. We have countless examples of throughout history of men, women, and children not necessarily wanting to live outside of their zones of comfort, but having no choice because the call to greater expectations for not only them, not only their families, not only their church, but for the broader community was stronger. Even some, this is summed up in the great words of our 41st president that I loved that, uh, that I heard when I read this. Our challenges are great, but our will is greater. My brothers and sisters, that's what we see not only in this Isaiah scripture, but we see it in the Luke scripture. Uh, uh, getting outside comfort zones comes up sometimes at the most inopportune time. Think about it. Mary, I don't know how pregnant Mary was, but, but they had to travel a far ways and there was no Uber at the time. There was no nonstop flight. There was no uh, taxi service, but they had to travel outside of their comfort zone. 
They didn't want to. It wasn't something that they planned for. But I, in my own imagination, think that the very faithful people of Mary and Joseph, the very faithful people of us here today, say that God has caused, called us to birth something special. Mary and Joseph, it was the Son of God. We may not be birthing physically the Son of God, but when we step out our zones of comfort, we can birth life. And we call that life hope. We call that life love. We call that life joy or peace. It may be difficult. It's tough. But God calls us out of our comfort zone so that we can birth those things, those life, in areas that need it the most. It is practicing this spiritual discipline of moving forward in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the uncertainties, in spite of the fear and the sorrow, even the unexpected journey itself that will deepen your trust in God, move you to sing that song in your heart, and as a result, grow, grow individually, grow as a family, and grow the ministry that God has called you to. It's tough. But God is with you. He will make those rough places smooth. And he will lead you down paths. Paths that you have not yet seen before. But don't be afraid. Because the hand of God is with you. Amen.